Yeah, Tommy. Three years old, I remember Astro Smash. Now I'm getting to play a revised one in 2021. What is up my friends and welcome back to another video. Just got back from my trip to Pennsylvania, Eastern Pennsylvania. We went to the Crayola Experience. Um, I've never been to I don't know, a kiddie place like that. Um, would I bring my kids there? Probably not because um, I didn't see anything that you couldn't do at home with my children as far as like, you know, arts and crafts stuff. But it's a nice little place to, you know, if you live local to get the kids out of the house for a few hours, I'd say, yeah, bring them over there. But when I go back to Eastern Pennsylvania, 85 miles away, just for my kids, you know, for that place, probably not. But um, it was a, a nice little place, a popping event. You know, it was a lot of kids and adults lining up to try out the Intellivision Amico. And uh, of course, it was amazing. To friggin meet some youtubers there that um i've been following for a while including youtubers that have been supporting me for a long time you know what i mean so it was nice to uh to meet them and some amazing personalities uh yeah i was like a, a little um fanboy you know when i when i saw cyrus martin because um you know, he's one of my hidden gem channels man I, that guy sounds like this radio broadcaster he's like the video game whisperer, man. I can just sometimes if I have trouble sleeping, I'll listen to one of his live streams, and uh, he's just a you know eloquent speaker. And yeah, I had to give uh, props to Cyrus Martin and um, everybody else that was there. Saggy Melons, the Retro Bro, another you know awesome channel. I, I'm I'm new to um, Saggy Melons. She is a character. A lot of fun to hang out with her, and her boyfriend was just as cool. My type of people. Um, of course, Tommy Tallarico was there. He had a lot of staff members there. And it was just a, a great atmosphere. Um, really good people. Um, and you can understand why uh, people just gravitate to Tommy Tallarico. He, he's a good guy, man. And I got to meet DJC, Game Studios, Retro Advisory Board. We've been going back and forth for years now. So he, I'm telling you, I always, that guy can write the the greatest of friggin uh, comments he's the, the king of commenters a retro advisory board that guy oh man it was a nice little sight there to see all the kids all the adults playing on the television amigos so i waited you know for things to cool off a little bit before i um went to go see tommy i was hanging out with you know all the youtubers and stuff but um yo, tommy tellerico he's got to have like about 10 years on me he's i'm probably early 50s like you know i don't know exactly i know he's about 10 years older than me but uh, that guy has an unlimited energy. Let me tell you, I can never be in his shoes. That guy's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it seems. He's always, you know, um, always endless energy. And it takes that type of passion to uh, build a product from, the, from scratch, you know, and try and get it out to market. Unbelievable. And uh, I feel like the mainstream audience that this machine is targeting will be impressed. And um, we're gonna get into that in a second. But I finally got my hands on the Intellivision Amico controller. It all made sense to me. You know, I've seen a lot, all the testimonials, I've, you see on, on YouTube, all you know, YouTubers that finally get a chance to play on this thing and they're like, wow, you gotta play it to understand it. And I, you know, it's so cliche, but they're right. And it's this, this spinner disc technology, man. Now, Tommy Tellerico gave me one of these. There's only probably a few dozen in existence of extra spinner disc. Um, this is like the uh, controller pad. And uh, I'm gonna make a, a separate video just on this technology. It's just a remarkable piece of engineering. Um, this thing can work as a, a spinner disc, um, a steering wheel. It's pressure sensitive, so as you push down on it, it can be used as a throttle. It can be used for games like Tempest. I mean, Pong. It's gonna change the way you've played old retro games and retro reimagined games. So here you have the Intellivision Amico, the retro gaming industry. It's a popular industry. Um, just go onto Amazon, just type retro games. You'll see dozens of products of companies coming out with all different things from, from retro consoles to retro, you know, little arcade machines to the big ones, arcade one up. It's everywhere. And with the Intellivision Amico, 
not only will they be porting original old school retro games, they're going to be making retro reimagined games, all new types of, of innovative games. And what's going to make this console unique from everything else is this piece of technology. This is going to change the way or make it different the way you've played video games before. I've been playing video games for over 40 years and this is a brand new piece of technology never before been created, engineered specifically for the Intellivision Amico. And this is this little piece of plastic and a little bit of metal and con conductive material is fascinating and this will make the difference when playing video games. Just like you've seen in the past, Nintendo come up with these innovative creations. I admire this little invention. Wait till you see, wait till you have this controller in your hands and use this. Now, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a video just on this thing right here in the coming weeks. It deserves its own video. Seeing these games in person, now when you see them on YouTube, it, um, it doesn't do these games justice. Seeing them visually on an HD screen with your own eyes, not being recorded off a phone, you know, off the TV, it, you don't get the same effect. You can see actual depth in the graphics. There's like, that's why they call it 2.53D, <laughs> if that makes any sense, two and a half D. But you, when you see the, the games, you can see like the depth and perception, like Shock Shock looks really impressive, like with your own eyes, especially, you know, Astro Smith, a bunch of these games look really, really impressive. And you know what? I don't, I'm, I was never much of a, I don't really care about the graphics, but if you are into graphics, these are, these, these games are great. And it doesn't even matter, Those, the controller and that touch screen controller, it played like a, like a, like a Ferrari, man. It, <laughs> We're about to play on the Intellivision Amico. Here we go, baby. Let's try this out. It looks so, it looks, it feels like really expensive in my hand. I'm excited. Let's try this out. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying over here, bro. You're fucking not, not a small person. The controller had like this protective um, clear screen that you would have like on your cell phone. So if you drop it, it's not going to break or splinter or crack. No, you could tell that the controller can hold up. You know, if you threw it across the room or, you know, dropped it on the floor, it, it can take a beating before it's destroyed. You could tell. And um, there was no lag on the controller. Instant response. The touchscreen was actually a faster response than the trigger buttons. It's hard, hard to explain. This, because the spinner disc also doubles as a throttle, a pressure sensitive button. Like I don't think I've ever used a D-pad or analog stick that's pressure sensitive. You know what, I mean, what I'm saying? I mean, you have the R3 button on your analog stick for like, you know, PS4 and PS3. But never have you had your touchpad pressure sensitive. And that, I'm telling you, it's going to change the way a lot of games play. And it frees up other buttons to do other things. Um, hold it for a sec. Hold, 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 keep it steady. Exactly. Let's play. And, and Tommy's always saying, you know, it's the controller, it's the controller. Wait till you get your hands on the controller. And he's right. You've never played on anything like this before. I don't care how old you are. This is brand new stuff. No lag. Real time. No lag. He's lying. There's tons of lag. <laughs> Seen it from the start. Seen it from the start. It's comical. So anyway, yeah. You can, that's all I want to get, bro. All the naysayers can say it's a cell phone chipset or whatever, and I've said this in past live streams. If Android is selling their cell phones for five hundred dollars and i you know apple selling their cell phone chip sets for a thousand dollars and iphone tens a thousand dollars tommy tellerico was selling his cell phone chip set in television amico for 250 and he's given brand new technology he's definitely taking a hit he's losing money on every one of these machines that will be sold and just like you know sony and nintendo that's how it usually is you're going to take a hit on the sales of your console but you make it back and selling your software there's no doubt, this thing's costing more than 250 to make this console. I don't care what anybody says. After the event, we went to this, uh, they're like this little after party, little uh, private restaurant, um, little buffet thing. And um, that's when I got, I got to, to um, talk to Tommy. We got a little alone time. The guy was so busy. You gotta remember, there's hundreds of people there. And he's running around. Just imagine like if you guys remembered, you guys remember when you got married, when it was you and your wife 
and hundreds of people and you're just trying to talk to everybody and it's a blur. That's how t it was for Tommy, uh, you know, on Saturday. He was just running around, you know, showing all these, running around with these kids, you know, putting controls in people's hands, like nonstop, man, all by himself. And I didn't see that many people like working for him. This guy does everything himself, man. In incredible. We were trying to help him, you know what I'm saying? Because I just felt bad seeing, I'm here hanging out. I see Tommy running around, you know, trying to get everything done. So with me and my brother and other YouTubers, we were trying to help him whenever we, we you know, when we could. But at the after hours, when I got to talk to Tommy a little in private, you know, personally, you know, the guy gave me this hug, man, and uh, yo, I felt it. He gripped me, man, and it held me for a second, and he said, Joe, you know, thank you for everything that you do. And, you know, we got into some personal conversation, and I'm not going to share that, but what, what he did leave with me was that he said things that I would, you know, something that he said to me will always stick. And then I think of, like, all the naysayers of the Intelligent Amigo that really don't know what they're talking about because they never played on the thing yet the thing that's not even out yet so anything you're saying is based on speculation and you're just constantly spamming these negative videos tommy says to me he looks behind me and i can see i see all these people sitting down beautiful families you know um uh husbands and wives with their children kids running around playing shock shock he said look around this room he said this is my family i have 50 over 50 people working for me I, you know, I help them put food on their table. You know what I'm saying? When these people on the internet go after me based on, you know, I'm paraphrasing, based on, you know, all this bullshit and accusations, they're attacking me and my family as he points around to all these great people. And that's why I feel the need to fire back and I get all emotional about it. This is Tommy saying this to me. And, you know, I totally get it, you know, and I'm passionate about this product, you know, and, and it's not, it has nothing to do with it. I'm just a gamer and I, and I feel the need to defend other YouTubers and defend the product. I get it. So from his perspective, man, these people like the Pat, the NES punks, the Darius Truxtons, just spitting bullshit, you know, they're literally attacking, you know, these families that have to put food on, on, on the table and feed their kids. Like, you're messing with their livelihood by bullshitting and making up these, this bullshit. And, you know, that's why he is so, like, defensive over the machine. Plain and simple, man. Good guy, and I can understand why so many people gravitate to him. He's, he's not full of shit. He's just authentic. He's uh, inspiring. And I, I you know... One of my friends told me, you know, I'm not gonna tell you who uh, I talk in private. He's like a chameleon. He has an adaptable personality. He just knows what to say to you. He's, you know, he's just a great adaptable guy. And he's, a, you know, he's a very likable guy. And some people fucking think, some some people just probably become jealous of that. What I think, how Tommy creates um, these these villains is that um, he's very nice to everybody. And sometimes you'll meet some people probably over the top fanboys that little want a little more personal access to Tommy and then when Tommy can't give it to those people they become like that fucking obsessed celebrity fan that just goes after him and I think he's created some some um some uh, crazy anti fans over the years and these are the type of people that they go after him it's kind of pathetic you know it's, it's crazy but I, I can see how someone can become obsessed with him and then want to go after him and attack him, you know? Because they're not getting his attention. So yeah, that's my two cents on that. But, you know, I know I'm rambling. I don't even know how long I'm, I'm rambling here. So I'm going to probably have to chop up my video because I could just talk all day about this event. It was so much fun. And I know I'm missing tons of shit. But um, around midday, I we went to the local bar. Um, I, I grabbed the Retro Bro out of there. Just the three of us, me and my brother and Retro Bro, we went to this bar up, up the road. What is up, my friends? We're walking in Eastern Pennsylvania. Doing, Turbo Joe in the house. With the retro bro and my real bro. Yeah, we're about to get a little midday drink. <laughs> um, it was like this uh, pizza coal-fired bar. Oh, shit, I just hit the... It's like this pizza coal-fired bar. So I figured, ooh, coal-fired pizza. We go in there, you know, um... Now, I don't want to rag on food made in Pennsylvania. This is maybe just a bad day. I've, you know, I've been in Pennsylvania plenty of times, but the food was memorably bad when I was there in Pennsylvania. So we go, we go to this bar 
I order like coal fired pizza. Why would you not order the coal fired pizza? It says coal fired pizza, you know, in front of the the uh, the bar. And uh, long story, I'm like, you know, I I'm a picky eater, and they always say picky eaters make good cooks because you just have a your, your taste buds can just pick up on shit. No bullshit. This was um, ragu jod sauce dumped on on a on a crust. Um, I couldn't eat it, man. My brother friggin' devoured that shit. And even Retro Bro said, that's fucking ragu sauce, man. <laughs> so yeah, now he wasn't uh, as enthusiastic. I think he had like a salad. He's all, he goes on his muscle diet. So yeah, I wanted carbs, man. And then I had, um, afterwards we went to the um, Dunkin' Donuts. So I figured, how could you go wrong? It's Dunkin' Donuts. I wanted to get an iced coffee. I needed like a mid uh, midday afternoon pick-me-upper. And uh, yeah, my, my Dunkin' Donuts was just too much milk. Not enough coffee, it was like really weak. And then uh, that night, before we, we went back to New York, I had a burger and fries at this local restaurant. And how could you mess with burger and fries? <laughs> My burger tasted like a fucking Topps burger. Can only eat like half of it, but no, no, the french fries were good. But anyway, yeah, I don't know. I'm ragging on Pennsylvania food. And I sound like this high almighty food critic, critic from New York. But I just had to add that, man. I, you know, the food was, was pretty bad <laughs> on that Saturday in Pennsylvania. But, um... I had an amazing day and uh, you know, I'm probably missing a lot of shit, but um, I definitely just had an epic day hanging out with the YouTubers. You know, I played on the Amico. I knew I was going to have fun playing on that Amico, but uh, I, I really was um, blown blown away by this this little piece here. And I am just feel I feel fortunate that Tommy just gave me one of these. He said there's only, you know, a couple of these out there, so I felt really special to get one and yeah I'm gonna make a video just on this piece of technology and I'll give you examples of how this will change you know um, retro gaming or oh, retro reimagined gaming and how this will really um, boost this in television Miko because it really makes playing these a lot of these you know average games or retro games a totally different experience he also gave me um you know he gave a lot of us these little uh, controller pouches and, and you know you can say what the hell you need this for well, those of you that don't know, the controller goes in this pouch and you just take the controller with you. Your games will be on this pouch. Like if you take your controller with you and go to a friend's house, every game that you've purchased on your console will be stored in your controller. You take the controller with you, take it to your friend's house, and now you can play your games on your friend's console. And then when you leave, you know, your games come with you. And then the game, your games on his console will disappear when you leave the, the house. It's so freaking cool. Let me tell you, man, I, I made, um, I recently made a, an Intellivision critique video just because it's fun to like look at a product and try and critique it just for, yeah, as a, I'm a hobbyist reviewer's perspective, but um, hey, I just made up critiques just to critique it. I'm really excited about it. You know, um, I think over time, you know, if, the, if this console comes out and, and becomes successful over time, you can see maybe Tommy loosening up on some of the things I critique the console about and um, hey, the sky's the limit. I think the only problem they're gonna have is uh, getting the word out because, you know, they've been working on this machine for a couple of years now. I can only imagine like funding is becoming low. They have to get this product out there and start selling it, you know? And um, so advertising, the advertising campaign is not gonna be as big as you would see from other companies. But I, you know, I've seen other small little companies like Arcade One Up come out, of, come out, come from out of nowhere. So I feel like with the right type of um, like grunt work advertising and youtuber influence we can get this product out there and, and spread the friggin amico word yeah man so uh, i look forward to more amico content um stay tuned for you know my amico controller video and i'm gonna have another uh arc i'm gonna have an arcade video coming out soon and uh, yeah, let me put this video together now i put it all on my chopping block put it all together i hope you guys enjoy the video and, um, yeah, man, I'll see you again on the next one. Wednesday Night Live coming up in two days. And I'll have more stuff for you coming up in the coming weeks. You take care, everyone. Peace out. So, hey, <laughs> you made it all the way to the end of Turbo's video. You must really be friggin' bored or, I don't know, you're a big fan of Turbo. Or you're looking for something... Something's missing, yeah. Like Pablo, your favorite rat possum. So anyway, don't tell anyone. I was hiding in Turbo Joe's backpack when he went to the Amico friggin' 
Crayola Crap Factory. <laughs> and I overheard Tommy Tellerico sharing an Easter egg hidden in the game Astro Smash. <laughs> so, I don't know if I get too much in trouble, so I can't tell you what the Easter egg is yet. But, but, hey, oh yeah, Tommy, if you're watching this, yeah, remember Fast and Furious? My piece of shit dog is faster than your Ferrari. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. No, Pablo the Possum is wrong. He, he, whatever he heard is not true. I just asked Tommy. The uh, we cannot confirm that the original Astro Smash game is hidden in the new version. Not true.